looking at her. So when we actually pay attention to somebody, it is the conduit for a very natural sense of connection to arise. And we'll keep exploring loving kindness and compassion throughout our, our time here. It's never totally separate from wisdom, otherwise it would just be sentimentality, it would be something else. But it is a quality of attention that can be trained. And then we really have a different life because we have a, a much greater sense of, of connection that is happening. So in addition to kind of the quiet ways it's cultivated, like letting go and beginning again, and the birth of qualities like loving kindness and compassion born of insight, we also have practices that are just dedicated to strengthening those qualities. So because it's going to be New Year's Eve tonight, and I'm sure we're going to do some. I thought we could do some now um, to finish off the morning session, and then we'll keep exploring that practice in all kinds of forms um, throughout these days. So in the formal practice of loving kindness meditation, rather than resting your attention on the feeling of the breath, and rather than trying to be mindful, particularly of all the many things that come and go, which we can go back to as a practice, um, we choose certain phrases, and we rest our attention on the repetition of those phrases. The phrases are the conduit for paying attention differently. So for example, if you're in the habit of looking at yourself at the end of the day and pretty well only recollecting the things you did wrong or what you could have done better, let's just say. And the practice of loving kindness can be seen as a stretch. You know, maybe at the end of the day, as you kind of evaluate yourself, you just fixate on that really stupid thing you said at lunch at the meeting. So much so that your whole sense of who you are and all that you will ever be just collapses around that comment you made. So the practice of loving kindness is one of wishing yourself well. It's almost like recollecting anything else happened today? Any good within me? Any capacity to change? So we're stretching. But we're not moving from a true place to an untrue place. We're moving from a true place to another true place that usually doesn't get much airtime. Right? So we're challenging that fixation, that collapse. We wish ourselves well. And then we extend that by offering the phrases to other beings, those we feel close to, those we don't know that well, like that shopkeeper, those that we have some difficulty with. There are many, many ways of doing it. And it culminates in the offering of loving kindness through these phrases to all beings everywhere, to all of life. So any one session of practice, because that would be a lot to get in, you know, all these different relationships, we usually start with ourselves and end with all beings. And then it kind of depends on what's happening in your life, what you might choose to put in the middle. Maybe you have a friend who's getting an award today, you know, and you want to spend some time with them. Maybe you have a friend who's in trouble and you want to mentally, emotionally spend some time with them. Maybe you're going to the store today and you've chosen that shopkeeper as a, a recipient of, of loving kindness, whatever it might be. There are lots and lots of ways of, of playing in that middle portion. The power of the practice comes from, once again, concentration. And that is gathering all your attention behind one phrase at a time. We know what these phrases mean, so it's not just like repeating any old thing. But you don't want to be 
trying to somehow manufacture some enormous feeling. It doesn't matter. I've done this practice a lot, and I've done it a lot not feeling any great thing, thinking nothing was happening, only to discover in life where it counts, oh, I'm different. Look at that. I'm meeting people differently. I'm treating myself differently. Look at that. So it's kind of an adventure or an experiment that's best done without a lot of um, compulsion, like I've got to feel this or I've got to finish, you know, uh, working through that relationship by Sunday. Um, but much more a sense of experimentation, like, let me just try it. Let me see what happens. Um, usually we choose three or four phrases and they need to be very general because it's very disruptive to concentration if you're continually trying to think of new phrases with every new person. Uh, that's not to say you should feel imprisoned by the phrases. Sometimes someone comes to mind and a very different set of phrases comes with them and that's fine, but you don't really want to be sitting here endlessly thinking, what about you? Let me think, you know. Um, and they need to be more open. <clears throat> so it's not just for ourselves. It can really apply to others. It's not like, may I beat the traffic on Sunday, you know, but like, more like, may I be happy. Um, common phrases, and you don't have to use these phrases. Remember, they're all translations. Common phrases, bless you, beginning with ourselves, are, may I be safe, be happy, be healthy, live with ease. Live with ease means in the things of day-to-day -day life, like livelihood or family, may not be such a struggle. May I live with ease. May I be safe, be happy, be healthy, live with ease. The words being words are going to be imperfect. I usually suggest you choose good enough phrases. The feeling tone is not, sometimes the may I or may you kind of throws people. It's not meant to be pleading or imploring. Uh, my friend Sylvia Borstein told me once, she said it's the hortatory subjunctive part of speech. Um, she said, it's like you hand someone a birthday card and you say, may you have a happy birthday. May you have a great new year. May you have a great new year, right? It's got some verve to it. May I be happy. May you be happy. Um, so you choose three or four phrases. And I'll make suggestions about the um, process and moving through these different categories. Begin with yourself through the phrases, offering this sense of well-wishing to yourself. The skill set is really the same. Your mind will likely wander a billion times. It's OK. See if you can let go and come back. And then billion and one, OK. Just let go and come back. In this case, come back to the phrases. OK, so let's sit together. If you want to sit comfortably.